And joining us now is our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Armin, good to see you. Um, considering that Americans and others have been told to stay away from the Kabul airport, how is it physically possible to meet this August 31st deadline? Isn't that now in doubt? It's very much in doubt because several Western nations are now saying that it's no longer safe to fly out of Kabul airport. Uh, remember, Monty, that only a few weeks ago, thousands of criminals walked free from Bagram prison in Afghanistan, including jihadists called by one Western newspaper the terrorist elite, including al-Qaeda and other extremist groups. Uh, now, you have to put that together with the fact that there are a lot of weapons that were left behind uh, when the Afghan army retreated in the face of the Taliban. So if you put those two things together, you can see why there's such a worry now about Kabul airport. And we've already heard about cargo planes that are leaving Kabul airport, airport putting down flares to disrupt any potential surface-to-air missile. And this is what the countries that are doing the evacuations are really worried about, that uh, one of their planes could get hit by uh, a missile, which would obviously be uh, uh, an unimaginable disaster given the number of people on board those uh, those Kabul, uh, the, those planes that are, that are taking off. Uh, ironically now, some of the countries that were pushing President Biden to extend the deadline beyond August the 31st, uh, the Taliban of course didn't want an extension, but some of those same Western countries are now saying that they have to cut short their evacuations. So France, for example, which was one of the nations that was nudging Joe Biden to extend that deadline at the G7 talks uh, earlier this week, uh, France is now saying that as of tomorrow, as of Friday evening, it will no longer be safe to evacuate uh, people from, uh, from Kabul airport. So this does cut short by a few very crucial days evacuations, and it means that, of course, even fewer people will be able to get out. And already, had the deadline of the 31st been uh, adhered to, that would have still left a lot of Afghans uh, unable to, to get out in time. Well, this is not only a, you know, a very concerning situation for people at the at the Kabul airport. Those who are fortunate fortunate enough to get out uh, isn't the ordeal for them just beginning. Well, I think there are d different situations. You know, the luckiest ones have were approved for. Uh, special immigrant visas, they had the paperwork, they were able to get to the airport to get on a flight and so forth. So the luckiest ones will be able to reach the countries that they worked with, that they gave their services to, uh, probably without too much difficulty. But of course, there are a lot of others who are still relatively lucky in that they managed to get out, but they couldn't complete the visa application process. So they will have to do that from various transit hubs uh, around the world. And to date, at least 13 countries have agreed to temporarily uh, host uh, Afghans that have managed to flee. But of course, Monty, that still leaves many, many, many others stranded uh, in Kabul and other parts of Afghanistan. Those people who feel that they're in danger of reprisals from the Taliban have gone into hiding. They're internally displaced. Based on past experience, one would expect some of them to eventually somehow make it, make it across some of Afghanistan's land borders. There are already very, very large uh, populations of Afghans in Iran and Pakistan, those two uh, neighboring countries have the largest Afghan refugee populations. Uh, some will no doubt try their luck uh, with asylum applications from third countries if, and that's a big if, they can actually get across those land borders at some point. And of course, there are others still who will attempt the clandestine migration route that goes uh, through Iran, Turkey, and onwards into the European Union. Yeah, it's a, a desperate situation all the way around. Our international affairs editor, Armin Georgian. Armin, thanks so much.